I'm Angel Albert, I'm a veterinarian and yeah, graduated from um, USF Florida in 1983. I've been dairy production and medicine since that time and I'm currently involved primarily in medicine consulting, which does include the nutritional aspects of the dairy farm as well as all the other disciplines. We milk about 4,000 cows. I've been the veterinary consultant there for the last 20 years. Um, I'm located in Bell, Florida. One thing I didn't know about that we had realized that with the inclusion of the farm, farm and forages, which included ryegrass this year, as well as the corn silages, our fat levels on diet were approaching 5%, uh, mostly coming from vegetable type products. Uh, the other byproduct feeds that we had, which was brewer's grain and hominy, was also carried in a lot of the um, vegetable fats. There were also some of our uh, more economical items in the diet. It was a challenge of uh, the butterfat test. So the amount of free fat in the diet was uh, probably over two pounds per cow per day. And um, that presented some challenges with the butterfat test. Not knowing what to do about it this year, of course, in years past, we would moderate the fat levels of the diet by pulling out those products to try and reduce the fats in the diet to try and improve butterfat tests. But um, this year, that would have been a problem with increasing feed costs because the items that we had in diet that were high in fat were our lowest cost items as well as our forages. So it's quite a dilemma as to what to do. Uh, to moderate the fats in the diet without increasing feed cost. And there was no guarantee that it would make a big significant improvement in the blood fat test, which was running uh, in the low threes, three one, three two, and sometimes approaching three zero. Um, the cows were healthy, had no issues there with uh, her health issues, no signs of acidosis or anything of that nature. Just the better pets are pushing that as somewhat suggested that we had the wrong fats in the diet, but didn't know what to do about it. Those ants that showed that uh, this was brought by, by some of the, uh, by Jonathan Griffin and Tyler Brandsetter came by the farm and presented some data from dairy science that showed that adding potassium to the diet would, uh, if it had the wrong type of uh, trans fats in the in the diet that they could be suppressing butterfat test, and you could use potassium to offset or to block that pathway that was you know suppressing butterfat. So we looked at the potassium levels. We're not uh, exceedingly low, but they're not uh, anywhere near the suggested levels in the article, approaching 1.8 percent of the diet. Currently, we were at. Uh, well, probably about one and a half percent of the diet. And at that point in time, so well, it's um, easy to see if it's going to be um, going to help butterfat. Was we did went, we went ahead and sent off fat samples to uh, Jenkins Lab in South Carolina, Clemson, and sure enough, it showed that we had uh, high levels of the trans fats that suppress the butterfat test. At that point, we uh, or even just prior to that, we went ahead. And Increase the DCAD plus in the diet to bring the potassium levels up to about 1.85. And I would say within the week, uh, better fat test improved by almost a half a point. And over a period of two or three weeks since, my better fats went from in the low threes to in the mid threes to high threes. And we've had tests on some loads approaching three nines, three eights. So, Again, we didn't run a controlled trial, but we seem to perceive an, also an increase in milk volume. I think it was a feed conversion improvement as well as components. Both fat and protein did increase. One thing is just people to have low butterfat tests, and they can't find out why and the cows have been reasonably healthy, and, and the amount of fat in the diets is to um, try DCAD to see if that uh, uh, trans fat issues, uh, suppressing butter fat, it won't take a long time to we can spend all the time and effort to send the milk samples off and see if you can get a confirmation of the 
uh, uh, say acids in the milk, but uh, you could see the results on the farm long before you could get the results back. So it's a simple opportunity there to have an unexpected butterfat test where even if you think you could get more fat, there's a lot of fat coming in the diet from those type of sources of forages and, and byproduct feeds, just to increase the potential in the diet to 1.8 to maybe 1.9 percent, and if you see the improvement in uh, butterfat components as well as maybe milk production. It's just one of those things where you could actually just put in the diet, see what the results tell you, and then you can either choose to back off the level of potassium until you get to a crossing point of, of um, cost-benefit, or you may not have any response at all, and you can go back looking for other things and pull it out. Uh, so it's it's just an easy diagnostic tool to say, okay, let's increase potassium and, and through that plus moderate the chlorides, make sure the chlorides aren't too high, and uh, see if you get the response. If you look at the economics of it, uh, the North Florida holding example, uh, we we on the table about $6,000 a month worth of DCAD plus, and it made us about $50,000 in income. So there's a, there's a very high uh, cost-benefit return. You know, a lot of these products on the market, you, know, you may see a 1 to 1.5 or a 1 to 1. You know, do return. In this case, you know, you could see as much as a one to five or one to six return. If that's what's causing you trouble, compared to today's butterfly prices, complicated process. It's look at the diets, look at the components. Think you can make more milk and components so the potassium levels are are high enough at one point. Uh, I'm shooting for one point eight recommendation now on potassium, particularly when we're feeding a lot of our homegrown high solids diets. Um, the grasses can carry on, which was kind of surprising to us, but uh, for those people in the world that feed a lot of ryegrass on grazing cattle, I mean, the ryegrasses can bring a lot more dietary fat than we ever expected.